with no identification. She was considered a Jane Doe, and she was buried. Shirley was a traveler, and from the Samsung Cree Nation in Alberta. That is, this is the final step. Finding her was one, two years ago. Um, bringing her home is, is today. Today's that final step. She says she started the search as a young woman and has grown old looking. It's no more not knowing. It's no more uncertainty. Don't give up. Like, don't, don't give up because there is hope. Hey guys, it's me here, Comrade Lavender here, and I'm back with another murdered, missing Indigenous woman true crime case. Today I want to do the true crime case update of the cold case solved murder of an Indigenous woman named Shirley Suze. Murder and missing Indigenous woman journey to justice story into her true crime story. So let's get started into this true crime case video. So yeah, this has been featured in a number of media and TV. It's been seen in numerous like news outlets very recently. It will also allegedly be featured on A&E's TV true crime show Cold Case allegedly soon in 2022 allegedly. So, background on the victim, Shirley. Shirley Ann Suse was a member of the Cree Nation, one of her closest friends. Northwest remembers her friend as a soft-spoken, gentle soul, who was a hard-working woman who took care in her appearance. She never complained, and when they were alone together at the residential school in the area, they would laugh and speak in Cree. When they were... Released at age 16, Shirley went to Edmond and Northwest stayed. From there, Shirley would move to Vancouver. Northwest would not see her again until 1975. She was quoted in saying, I was so happy when I met her again, but I couldn't talk to her because at the time she had an addiction. Shirley was seen at a family member's funeral in 1977. Okay, so the events leading up to her murder and what happened to her... Shirley used to actively and regularly send cards to friends and family and to her mother, you know, letters in the mail. But in 1979, that would be the last time a message was received from Shirley from um, to her mother. Setting off alarm bells, her mother knew something was terribly wrong immediately. And on July 15, 1980, an unknown woman's body, Jane Doe of an indigenous origin, was found in an almond orchard in Kern County near Bakersfield, California. She had been raped and stabbed 27 times, suffered 18 wounds to her chest, and nine defensive wounds on her hands and arms. Three days later after that, another body of another woman was discovered in a high school parking lot in Ventura County, California. This victim had been sexually assaulted and had 16 stab wounds. She was, she was around 20 weeks pregnant. The victims as a whole were thought to be of native indigenous origin or Asian or Latina origin, despite similarities on how they've been killed. These true crime cases were not linked together at the time until later on. Attempts to identify each victim, such as investigating the tattoos on the woman found in Kern County, failed. Investigators visited a number of tattoo parlors and tattoo shops in the area to see if anyone could recognize the artwork if they did anything on any of these women. To no avail, they didn't get far with that. As her identity was unknown, she was called Jane Doe Kern County and would remain that way for decades and years. Shirley's true crime case remained unsolved for decades until in 2008, DNA collected from her body was matched to a serial rapist, Wilson Caucus. In 2018, he was found guilty of killing Sose and still a Jane Doe and another identified victim. And in officially in, in 2020, the DNA Doe Project used genetic genealogy DNA ancestry to discover that Jane Doe Kern County was actually Shirley Ann Suze. She was one of the first indigenous people to be identified via investigative genealogy science forensic science. Although Suze's body was located in 1980 near Baker, in Bakersfield, California, it wasn't until last spring that her remains were finally identified with help, again through DNA match with her niece Violet Suze. Um, the uh, evil man had moved to California following a discharge from the army for unsuitability, and in October 1977, he abducted, raped, and strangled a woman who survived this heinous 
attack and incident, this vile attack and incident, he was sent to prison on a plea deal that dropped the rape charge against him, and in 1980, he was paroled for some reason despite a probation report noting he had no remorse for his actions, and he didn't really care about what he did, and he was noticed as an extremely dangerous individual. Long story short, uh, throughout his whole entire life, I've been after that situation, he uh, did violent crimes. He got locked up in and out of prison. He was actually sentenced to 12 years to life on another charge after this whole situation that was still ongoing because they didn't know who she was. The evil man who had previously denied having sex with the victim pleaded not guilty at his trial. His trial began on May 14, 2018, and on May 31st, 2018, he was found guilty of murdering the two Jane Doe's, but was not convicted for the fetus's death in the pregnant lady's uh, situation. On July 12, 2018, he received two consecutive licenses with no possibility of parole. After about 43 years since she was last heard from, Suze's remains were laid to rest in Riverside Cemetery in on March. I mean, on May 28th. If you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye, guys. See you next video.